everyone welcome back to my channel so in today's video guys i just want to share with you my us application time frame and also so i would like to point out important points regarding petition so i hope that will answer the questions that i'm still getting through my instagram account so first guys if you haven't subscribed to this channel please consider subscribing now for more videos related to this post let's get started i submitted my application november 2016 i submitted it right after i knew that i passed my nplex examination that was two years more than two years ago so i passed the nplex november 2016 and a few days after i passed i immediately submitted an application online if you've been my subscriber you know that my agency is worldwide health solution so i submitted online application and they scheduled me for an interview then i passed the interview the second interview because i failed the first one so they need to look up for another employer for me and then i got a job offer december 2016 so what is on the job offer the job offer is eb3 eb3 visa or employment based visa that means an employer is going to sponsor your visa in order for you to come here for work so that is a permanent residence or you are a green card holder and green card holder is your green card will be valid for 10 years i was um, given the opportunity december 2016 and then after three months they process my application they file an i-140 so i-140 that is the form that they need to file to, for a, a petition for a resident alien to work here in the usa so after a while um they they file for it they submitted everything around may 2017 so guys, um, I receive a receipt notice indicating my priority date, which is May 30, 2017. I received the receipt notice um, around June 2017. So I will just post the time frames here. So after that guys, um, since receipt notice, I will insert the copy here on what it looks like. So normally, um, what the agency told me, the approval, because it's still subject for approval, guys. Um, this is the one of the most critical parts of visa application. Because um, right after they submitted your I-140, they will give you that priority date. It will be subject for approval by the immigration. So normally, it will be approved or reviewed within two to three months but it depends guys because they're still reviewing the backlogs that they have before so in my case my processing center is nebraska so it also depends on the processing center um, for me it took 11 months to get approved so my priority date got approved after 11 months so may 2018 guys so 11 months fortunately my case has been approved and then come july 2018 so again my case has been approved may 2018 after two months june july my priority date got current guys so that was July 2018. So since that time that my priority date got current, that was the time that I processed the requirements such as visa screen. I um, took my IELTS exam, but I took my IELTS exam at a later date already since I was not yet prepared. 
during that time. I only process the major requirements when I found out that I got current. So I will insert what is a priority tip. You will need to track it on the visa bulletin. And normally it's backwards, so you will match the date on the third row on the visa bulletin on table one if your priority date is already current. So, okay, July 2018, our case is already current, approved, priority date approved. So, yay, diba? This is what I've been waiting for, um, current on the visa bulletin around September 6, 2018. So, um, they're already aware that I got approved July to so August, September 6, 2018. So, the agency already paid for my immigrant visa fee bill. So, that is covered, guys, by the agency. So, the fee bill, once they paid it, um, I need to complete my DS-264. So, my DS-260, I completed it at the same time too, September 6, 2018. So, that's um, how excited I am. So, I immediately submitted it together with the documents that are needed, including my birth certificate, PSA, should be PSA copy, PSA birth certificate, your NBI clearance, and your passport copy. You need to have it submitted to them. So everything has been processed. I submitted my DS-260. So let's talk about the petition again. The only person that a green card holder can petition is a legal spouse, an unmarried children that should be advisable is under 21 years old. There are some articles that uh, were able to process children more than 21 years old and married but it would take a longer process, guys. Wait many, many years for that process. So still, the advisable is under 21 years old. They are the only person that you can petition. You can petition again your parents or your siblings, guys. The only time that you can do that is if you are already a citizen here. Because after five years, you can definitely be naturalized and you can apply for citizenship given that you have a good or clean record here. So, and you need to sworn. So after five years, then you can petition your parents and your siblings, brothers or sisters, or also spouse or um, children too. You can petition guys your relatives such as aunts, uncles, or cousins. You can do that if you are even if you are a citizen. So that's what I know. So disclaimer guys, this is what I only know. So when is the best time to get married? Because some of you are asking. So I just wanted to repeat what I reiterated on my previous video. The best time would be before you submit your DS-260 or before you file your DS-260. So that um, when it comes to your interview, guys, um, you can have the interview both at the same time na. Also, your medical. So, September 6, 2018. Um, I'm sorry for my cats. They are so hyper. Um, I submitted my DS-260 September 6, 2018 and then I got documentary qualified after a few days or a few weeks only. Three weeks guys. So when is that? It is September 25, 2018 that um, I received an email from National Visa Center that they already assessed my documents and I was already documentary qualified. So since I was already DQ, um, the next thing that you will get is you will get your interview schedule. So when did I get my schedule? They sent me an email for an interview invitation October 15, 2018. So I was scheduled for inter an interview November 19, 
2018. So they usually send you an interview. Um, they usually send you an interview a month before. So you can only get an interview schedule and you can attend your interview schedule if you are only current guys. Okay, remember that. So then, since I was scheduled for November 19, 2018, I should have my medical two weeks before my interview date. So that is the advisable date. Because um, although you can do it like a week before, but the best time is two weeks before. Um, if you're going to do it earlier, guys, um, remember, the basis of the expiration of your visa is your medical. And your visa is just good for six months. So that six months, you should be able to flew to the U.S. within that six months time frame. So guys, what they're telling before is once you get current, it's possible for you to leave the country within three to six months. And that is correct, guys. Because um, when I got current July 2018, I was given a visa November 2018, so it's nearly possible. So it's just a span of, um, so let's say July, August, September, October, November, I already have a visa. So within a span of four to five months, guys, um, I would be able to book a ticket to fly here in the USA. It's just that during that time, the tickets are very expensive. That's why the employer opted to book me to book a flight ticket gen scheduled January 2019. So I got a little delayed because um, because of the holidays. It's way too expensive. So they actually waited for a cheaper rate before they actually booked me a flight ticket. That's what happened. So guys, let's go back to um, marriage, guys. Um, the reason why it's the best time to get married before you file your DS-260 or before you leave the home country or the Philippines. Because guys, um, if you will do that, you're still under employment visa category or employment base. So your priority date will be the same. Because if for example, you got married right after you went into the US, that will be a different case. You will be considered a family based already. So for family based, um, that means it will be another case, it will be another petition. So everything will be reprocessed again. Because if you will do it right after um, you went to the US and then you got married, then it will be considered a family based application. The priority date will be different and it will be on the waiting list. Based on the comments of the lawyers, it could take two years or more or it actually depends still on the visa bulletin because we'll never know if there will be a retro or if, if it will be a current because the visa bulletin is unpredictable. But still, there are some couples who would like to have a follow to join status because they are not yet prepared to go here together since the employer will not cover all the expenses of the spouse or the dependent. They will only cover the primary applicant most of the time. So the primary applicant will be covered with the expenses, the airfare, the fee bill, but your dependent they will be the one who will pay for their airfare, for their fee bill, for their medical. So, medyo mabigat siya sa bolsa guys. Paganon. That's why the others will just um, have their dependent status as follow to join. Because if it's a company status, you can, can go here together. For a company status, sometimes it doesn't mean that if it's a company status, doesn't mean that you need to go here together for a company status there's still a time frame that he or she needs to leave the country within a year okay so this is what i only know guys i'm not saying that i'm perfect it's still best if you will check with the uscis or the immigration services 
it's best that you'll check their website for accurate information. So those are my time frame guys. And if you have any suggestions or questions, feel free to drop it down. I appreciate all of you. Thank you to the 2,000 subscribers. I'm very happy before I only have 4 subscribers. So it was such an achievement for this YouTube channel. So thank you so much guys. I'm very happy that I'm able to help other people um, by just uh, answering to your queries. Thank you for all your support. I appreciate all the suggestions. Even though I'm not able to do each and every one of those because sometimes we get busy at work too. So I hope to see you on my next video. Bye guys!